Now we're going to show you how to use the programmable functions of an AFM60 Ethernet IP encoder based on the integrated web server. As reference, we are using a small demo example of a crane with rotatable boom. The rotation of the crane is transmitted to the encoder via a gear motor with a ratio of 6.43 to 1. This means when the boom is turning one revolution, the encoder shaft turns 6.43 times. To access the web server, the laptop is connected to the encoder via a Wi-Fi switch and the internet browser by using the IP address of the encoder. On the start page of the web server, you have to register as an authorized user in order to have full access to the programming options. On this screen, we can see the details of the encoder identification as well as the current position and status. In order to adapt the encoder to this application, we will use the following settings. Number one, adapt the scaling of the encoder to the ratio of the application by using the round axis functionality. Number two, use the preset function in order to assign the desired position value to our starting position. Number three, choose the right counting direction for clockwise rotation. And number four, define two position limits for a status monitoring of the admissible rotation angle. Let's start with the adaption of the scaling by using the round axis functionality. We use the menu option parameterization where we can see an overview of all the available parameter values. Then we choose the submenu round axis functionality. When activating the function, a small table for adjusting the required parameters opens up. In addition, an application example is displayed on this screen. For our demo application, we need to use the following values for a correct adaption of the encoder. Set the nominator to 643 and the divisor to 100. All new values must always be confirmed with the enter button. This way, 6.43 turns of the encoder equal one turn of the application. In addition, we have to set the total resolution to 3600 position steps in order to have a resolution that equals 0.1 degrees, referring to one turn of the application. Now, one turn of the boom equals 3600 position steps of the encoder. With this, the encoder is exactly adapted to the application. As next step, we want to assign a preset value to our desired starting position in the middle of the working range. For this, we choose the submenu change preset. This function allows to assign a defined new position value independent from the actual encoder position. This makes the mechanical integration of the encoder into the application quick and easy. First, we move the boom of the crane to the correct mechanical position. Then, we enter the position value by confirming the value with enter. This new preset value is now assigned to the current position of the crane. Now we need to check and adjust the correct counting direction. By using the submenu units, we can adjust the so-called code sequence to CW, meaning clockwise. This leads to rising position values when turning the encoder shaft in clockwise direction. Finally, we want to limit the admissible rotation angle of the crane. For this, we assign a lower and upper value for the position limit. With the submenu limit values, we can see a list of limit values that can be defined and monitored via a status warning signal of the encoder. For our application, we use the monitoring of the position limits. We enter 300 for the minimum position and 3300 for the maximum position value. A dropping below or exceeding of one of these limit values will automatically lead to a status warning signal. Let's see how this works out when starting our application. At first, we return to the start page of our web server to monitor position value and status indicator. Then 
we switch to our demo application. Here, we slowly start turning the boom in clockwise direction. As we are turning the boom, the position values are increasing. As soon as we have exceeded the upper position limit of 3300, the status indicator will switch to red blinking. This indicates a warning signal while the encoder remains in operation mode. In addition, a short message is displayed, details in diagnostics status. Now we can look up these details by using the menu option Diagnostics and then the submenu Status. Here we can read lower or upper limit for position dropped below or exceeded. After this short demo example, we will now have an additional look at further programmable functions. Let's start with looking at the scaling function. Round axis and scaling cannot be activated simultaneously. Therefore, we have to switch off the round axis functionality first. Then we can use the submenu scaling. Here we have the possibility to define the counts per revolution with any integer number up to the maximum resolution. In addition, we can then adjust the number of revolutions in binary steps. The multiplication of both values results in the total resolution. Another important possibility is the various diagnostic information that the encoder can provide. This information is available on topics such as velocity, temperature, time or cycles. The monitoring of this information enables beneficial options for predictive maintenance. When using for example the submenu time, the encoder can differentiate between the actual motion time of the mechanics or the electrical operating time of the machine. For both attributes it is possible to display the actual time as well as a monitoring with a status warning signal based on programmable limit values. The same possibilities also apply to the other diagnostic information.